everything you need to know about the ARM IPO. This video is gonna break it down. Now I see a lot of people online and they're saying, is ARM the next Nvidia? So let's look at it a little bit closer. Let's see, is ARM the next Nvidia? That's a question I'm actually getting. Let's dive in. All right, so the ARM IPO is scheduled for September 14th, expected to price at 47 to 51 dollars per share. Now, of course, when it actually comes to market, if you're not getting it before it comes live, it's going to be more expensive because the price is going to get driven up before it comes available to most retail investors. So keep that in mind. So ARM is expected to price on September 13th. So you could actually see the price move even from 47 to 51 and then you're going to see it start trading on the next day that's going to be thursday september 14th so arm's going to list 95.5 million shares on nasdaq and projected capital raise is going to be 4.5 to really five maybe a little bit over five billion dollars so this would be the biggest ipo of the year topping the roughly four billion dollars raised from that johnson and johnson spinoff and then previously we had rivian so here it is thursday september 14th so british chip design firm arm holdings the ticker is just arm expected to start trading in the u.s after pricing its ipo this is something important to pay attention to we'll talk more about it later so japanese tech conglomerate softbank owns 100 percent of arm currently so it says here likely to sell a 10 percent stake to arm customers such as apple amd nvidia and intel each of which wants to ensure that it has access to arm ip over the long term now the original target was going to be 70 billion dollars this is going to be closer to of $50 billion on this IPO. And this news just posted this morning, Taiwan Semiconductor to invest $100 million in the ARM IPO. So what is ARM and what does it even do? So formerly an acronym for Advanced RISC Machines and originally Acorn RSIC Machine, which isn't a very exciting name, but ARM is actually confusing too because I said ARM to my wife and she looked at me like, what, what's ARM, you know? So they're based in Cambridge, England. Primary business, this is important, is the design of the ARM architecture family of central processing units, CPUs. This is from ARM. It says ARM customers have produced over 250 billion ARM-based chips to date. We anticipate that soon 100% of the world's digital data will be processed by ARM technology at some point during its life cycle. 30 plus years of innovation, a thousand plus hardware, software, and service providers in their ecosystem. That's massive. 99% of the world's smartphones run on ARM-based processors. 70% of the world's population interacts with ARM in some capacity. 90% of wearable devices run on ARM. 8,100 patents issued and pending. 2,000 plus technology license signed. 6,300 employees in 85 countries. And 900 plus ARM chips produced per second. These are some staggering numbers it shows you how big this company really is this is focused on a connected world and it mentions ai internet of things and 5g now historically when arm comes to mind you think of smartphones you think of 5g and you think of internet of things well and we'll talk more about that later and how they're trying to get into that ai space more so if you follow the channel you watch the deep dive on the semiconductor industry and you know that arm is focused on intellectual property ip cores there are over 150 companies globally that special specialize in IP cores, but ARM is probably the most well-known name. Think of IP cores as building blocks like Legos. So companies like ARM create IP intellectual property designs with the intent to resell to partners. Example, Apple licenses IP cores from ARM as a building block for their chips and plenty of other names, including Tesla, Nvidia, AMD, and more. So Apple and ARM, they're great partners, right? So when you, this is gonna be important when we talk about ARM and really what they do later on. So when you think of M1 chips from Apple, think of arm and here's some other companies that focus on ip cores so you can see cadence synopsis rambus arm and more so arm ipo arm designs the blueprint or architectures of certain semiconductors and generally what happens then is someone like apple will buy the ip core from arm they'll take that blueprint that building block they'll use eda they'll customize a chip and then they'll send that off to taiwan semiconductor to have it built to have it manufactured so apple is acting like a fabulous semiconductor company in that sense the same as nvidia or amd they don't actually manufacture 
manufacture the chips. They create the designs and then they send those designs off to a foundry like a Taiwan semiconductor like Samsung to have those chips manufactured. So these architectures are the overall designs, including components and programming language instructions that other companies use to build those chips. ARM-based CPUs are a 99%, 99% of the world's smartphones, including major players like Apple. So is ARM the next NVIDIA? And should you invest in this stock when it comes available? So the timing of this IPO is interesting, of course, because everybody is hyped up about artificial intelligence and semiconductors in general. These businesses like NVIDIA have had massive runs since the beginning of the year. You know, NVIDIA is up 200% this year, and that's evidence of that AI excitement. And some people call it hype, and some companies are being pulled in that hype that don't belong there. And other companies like NVIDIA, the numbers are showing that they are crushing it. SoftBank, the owner of Arm, they're positioning Arm really as an AI play, and they're pushing that for the IPO roadshow. So in the IPO prospectus, they're saying that ARM will be central to the transition to AI-enabled computing. So how much truth is there to that? So first of all, NVIDIA is a fabulous semiconductor company, but they're also branching more into software and they really have that full stack for AI. ARM deals with IP cores as discussed earlier. Secondly, ARM is focused primarily on CPUs. When you're thinking about NVIDIA and you're thinking about the AI buzz, what do you think about? You think of GPUs. And while CPUs are required in the data center, they're often used in conjunction with a GPU to train data, but not always. So ARM is focused on CPUs and IP cores. And ARM's business model is completely different from NVIDIA's because most of the money is actually made from royalties. And you can see this article here from CNBC. More than 50% of the revenue comes from smartphones and consumer electronics. So far, it's not seeing a big boost from AI. This is saying that ARM is unlikely to see benefit from AI through its revenue for at least three to five years, even though SoftBank is hyping it up as this huge AI play right now, and people are calling it the next NVIDIA. What SoftBank has been required to do is to sell ARM as an AI company like NVIDIA. Is that true? Is it a little bit misleading? Let's look a little bit closer. Now, if you remember NVIDIA, who's a great partner of ARM, NVIDIA tried to actually buy ARM for $40 billion last year, and that failed as a result of both US and European antitrust regulation. So some are saying even a valuation of $50 billion may be too optimistic. That's a $10 billion increase from last year. And SoftBank bought ARM in 2016 for $32 billion. And here's a quote here. Although it's grown in some respects, I actually think it's in a much worse position today than then, back in 2016 when it was $32 billion. There is now serious competition possible. And I showed you some of those competitors earlier. There's a bunch of them. There's over 150 companies that do this. The smartphone market has topped out. It's commoditized. The China operation is now looking very uncontrollable and the big customers have become much more self-sufficient. And on top of that, there's Qualcomm litigation to consider as well. This is likely to go to trial in the second half of 2024. We've never seen ARM litigate with strategic licensors before. Last year, ARM filed a lawsuit against Qualcomm and Nuvia, alleging that both companies broke licensing packs, infringed on ARM's trademarks by using them in conjunction with unlicensed products. This is key. NVIDIA Grace drives wave of new energy efficient ARM supercomputers. This is talking about an NVIDIA announcement, the NVIDIA Grace CPU super chip. So again, CPU, not GPU, adding to a wave of new energy efficient supercomputers based on the ARM Neoverse platform. So what's the difference between a CPU and a GPU anyway? So the CPU is the central processing unit. It's been called the brains of the PC. The GPU is essentially its soul. Over the past decade, however, GPUs have broken out of the boxy confines of the PC and GPUs have ignited a worldwide AI boom. They've become a key part of modern supercomputing. They've been woven into sprawling new hyperscale data centers. Still prized by gamers, they've become accelerators speeding up all sorts of tasks from encryption to networking to AI. While GPUs, so GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit. So GPUs are much more than just about PCs now. They remain anchored in a much older idea called parallel computing. And that's what makes GPUs so powerful. CPUs remain essential, fast and versatile. CPUs race through a series of tasks requiring lots of interactivity, calling up information from a hard drive in response to a user's keystrokes, for example. By contrast, GPUs break complex problems into thousands or millions of separate tasks and work on them all at once. So when you think about it architecturally, the CPU is composed of just a few cores with lots of memory, and it can handle a few 
software threads at a time. A GPU is composed of hundreds of cores that handle thousands of threads simultaneously at the same time. So this is a great comparison right here. CPU, several cores, GPU, many cores. CPU, low latency, GPU, high throughput. CPUs are great for serial processing, while GPUs, they're good for parallel processing. And while CPUs can do a handful of operations at one time, a GPU can do thousands at a single time, which is why GPUs are so critical for training these large language models for AI and generative AI. And we mentioned ARM Neoverse earlier, accelerating the cloud to edge infrastructure transformation. So again, this is CPUs and it's for cloud providers, carriers, developers, and customers. Okay, so maybe this isn't completely clear yet. And so this, this will probably help. The NVIDIA Grace Hopper Super Chip pairs a power efficient, high bandwidth NVIDIA Grace CPU with a powerful H100 Hopper GPU. So this is combining both CPU and GPU together. So why do you think that NVIDIA was interested in acquiring ARM in the first place? They need CPUs. So they do put out a combo product that I just covered, but NVIDIA is all about GPUs and GPUs drive AI. But to power those GPUs, you also need CPUs. And this is where ARM comes into play. Now, even though SoftBank is, is really pushing ARM as an AI company, most of their business really isn't from that. And many analysts are saying it's gonna take years before you actually see revenues from AI. Now, just this May, ARM unveiled two new chipsets that are targeted at machine learning applications in AI. One is a new CPU called Cortex-4. It's a chipset that delivers faster machine learning performance and consumes 40% less power. Now the second, this is where it's interesting, a GPU called G720 offers better performance and uses 22% less memory bandwidth. ARM remains committed to developing and testing our GPUs against new applications for machine learning. Okay, so that would be a little bit misleading because you might think, okay, GPUs, so now they're actually going to create GPUs and they're going to compete against NVIDIA. I actually had somebody ask me this question the other day. I saw it posted. They said, are you worried about ARM competing with NVIDIA for GPUs? And if you understand how IP cores and fabulous companies work, the answer is no. They partner together. But here's where it gets really interesting. Now I searched everywhere I could and I found this on ARM's website and it's talking about that G720 that we just discussed. This says the first GPU based on ARM's fifth generation architecture and designed for flagship smartphones. Well, this has nothing to do with super supercomputers that are processing data for AI. Okay, I'm gonna break down valuation. I'm gonna give you an opinion if I think the stock is a buy or not when it becomes available here on Thursday. Now, before I go on, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel, click that bell for notifications. And if this video is helpful, please do me a favor, drop me a like and drop me a comment. Also invite you to join our private community, Patreon Discord. You can visit patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth. We got a free trial going on right now for Elite, so you've got nothing to lose, give it a try. So I'm going through looking at different articles this one says valuing ARM, $50 billion looks reasonable. Now, one thing to note here, I think a lot of people are missing this, less than 10% of ARM shares are actually gonna be traded on the New York Stock Exchange. That means that 90.6%, those remaining shares, they're still owned by SoftBank. Now, the growth really isn't that impressive, and that's part of the issue because the valuation isn't cheap and there's not a lot of growth to support it. Now, they're telling us that they're gonna start accelerating growth over the next year or so, and that definitely would be a positive, but you have to take the word of management on that guidance. This is talking about it's hard to see meaningful, sustainable growth and where it's going to come from. Research and development R&D at the company has recently been hollowed out to make profits possible. And they've been doing some interesting things trying to get ready for this IPO to make it look more attractive. For example, ARM actually made some tweaks to the licensing model. So it says ARM has been more aggressive in pushing price increases in royalties and licenses for smartphones. And they do have a dominant position there, so they feel like they have leverage. This quote here, ARM is going to customers and saying, we'd like to get paid more for broadly the same thing. What SoftBank is doing at the moment is testing the market value of the monopoly that ARM has. And really it comes down to seeking to drive up ARM's profits and attract investors on this IPO in the public market. Now there are many reasons to be excited about ARM and it does really have a mode, especially when you think of smartphones. And they're trying to get more into this AI space when you think of data centers, supercomputers, and so on. When you think of the ramp of V9, you're talking about Amazon sh chips, so the Graviton on four NVIDIA Grace CPUs, and also the MediaTek 9200 Plus. But again, a reminder, keep in mind, this is a CPU licensing company, and we have not yet seen an AI licensing offering that's scaling from ARM. So this is an early innings here. ARM is also signaling a shift in their licensing model towards subscriptions. This is a positive. This is something, of course, the software industry has been doing for a long time. And if you know me, I like to invest in models that have recurring revenues. Will that lead to better growth? Not sure yet. Some people don't like it because it's a big change that they've been
been doing it the same way for a long time. Other negative factors to consider. From a financials perspective, they obviously used to produce over 50% operating margins. And this is talking about how ARM needs to build those margins back to where they were the last time it was public. And this is really important as well. ARM may lose about a quarter of its sales after splitting from its ARM China subsidiary. If you read the F1 filing, you'll see the backstory around how ARM has sold out of most of their stake in ARM China. This is 24% of sales last year for ARM. And I'm sure the reason for that was to get the IPO done. This is from Reuters. For retail investors, jumping on ARM's blockbuster IPO is a risky business. So this is showing you the 10 biggest US initial public offerings IPOs over the past four years. And they're down an average of 47% of the closing price on their first day of trading. And then it also talks if investors bought on the interday price surge, which often happens, they were down even worse, average loss of 53%. So what happens oftentimes when these come public, they'll pop and then they drop. And the, and the problem here is you have to remember Remember the IPO price, you have accredited investors, you've got institutions, they all get their hands in the cookie jar before it actually, you can go on your Robinhood app and just go buy ARM. So you're kind of getting the table scraps, right? So you look at this return on IPO price, Airbnb up 111%, but return on buying the first day at high, you're down 13%. So buying that first day of IPO, your odds generally aren't very good. You can see you're down 80% on Rivian, you're down 74% on UiPath, DoorDash down 58%, Snowflake down 50%. Even institutional investors invited to buy those 10 IPOs before trading would be down an average of 18%. If you're buying in the market on average, you're buying at a premium to the offer price. And earlier we were talking more about data center and AI. While we are excited about the opportunities for this, we believe the opportunity is perhaps limited just to 15% of total company royalties by the end of the decade. That's a long ways away. You're talking seven years to get 15% of total royalties. Arms should be valued at a lower multiple than that of the last decade. And here it's saying that ARM should benefit from the overall growth in microcontrollers, but share gains and penetration may slow considerably in the future. There's another article from Morningstar, ARM IPO, a dominant chip designer, but a very, very lofty price. So the first risk it talks about is China, which we already covered. You know, nearly a fourth of ARM's revenue came from China, which ARM does not control. With a target valuation of $50 billion, and I think it's probably gonna end up being more than that by the time you can actually buy shares, this is a multiple about 20 times revenue. NVIDIA is also trading at 20 times multiple, but experts expect NVIDIA to grow at a rate of 100% this year and ARM's not growing much at all. It really, ARM should be between 12 and 15 times sales at the most. ARM is not a fast growth company anymore. This is Renaissance Capital, and that may affect how excited investors are about the listing and how much they're willing to pay for shares. That said, the positive likelihood that ARM will be a relevant company over the next decade plus is quite high. Thanks to its strong competitive position, cutting edge technology, and long long-term relationship with its clients. All right, so what am I gonna do with the ARM IPO? Am I gonna buy shares? I think this is a good company. It has very strong partnerships. It has a moat in certain areas, especially when you think of smartphones. It's getting more into the AI space. It's an important partner for companies like Nvidia, like Tesla, like AMD, like Apple. And for IP cores, and you think of CPUs, it's a very strong company. It's definitely not the next Nvidia, because if you just watch the video, you understand that they're completely different things. It's like apples and oranges. And really they're partners and they help each other. Arm has no intent to take their designs and go direct to consumer. They're in the business of creating IP cores, intellectual property, and then selling those to partners, fabulous companies like an NVIDIA and AMD and Tesla and Apple. Those companies then take those IP cores, they approve upon them. They send those designs off to a foundry like a Taiwan Semiconductor or a Samsung to get those manufactured. So it's this big ecosystem. If you understand the semiconductor industry, you understand where each company fits and they're very different things. I think that the ARM IPO is expensive. I think as a long-term investment, it's something that I'd like to own in my portfolio. I personally am going to hold off. I'm going to sit in the sidelines and just watch it out. I won't be surprised if the stock pops at the open and it could run really hard. You might say, well, why didn't you buy that? If, honestly, if you're doing these IPOs, it's probably more of a trade. If you're thinking of buying it on IPO day and holding it five years, I showed you some of that data earlier. The odds really aren't stacked in your favor. You got risk with China. You got risk with the lawsuits with Qualcomm, an expensive valuation. SoftBank still going to own, you know, 90, 91% of the shares. I think at this point, based on the price level I'm seeing that there are too many negatives for me to want to buy shares. Although I do like the company long-term and I'll be watching it closely on my watch list. If this video is helpful, guys, make sure you subscribe. If you're new here, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Are you going to be buying some ARM shares on the IPO day? Let me know. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.